Hello, hello, this is Johannes Watery from Hold to Run. Today we will talk about in app updates and um, we will code it into our game application. And I will talk about why you should also implement it into your application. So, why? Have you noticed recently that the um, Android, especially the Android 13 and also Android 14, they will manage the app so that if the user doesn't really use the app in a, in a certain period of time, the Android will put it into a sleep mode and uh, it'll be like a hibernating application, which really doesn't even get the Google Play updates anymore. So it's becoming more resource managed platform regarding because they want to say battery and uh, they don't want to um, keep those apps in, in, in the front line, so to say. So let's say the user comes back to the app after a longer period of time. It's, it's been frozen, I don't know how many days, a week, a month, half a year. So the user will be using old version if you don't immediately offer the, uh, the in-app update option. And uh, what might happen, of course, is that he has a buggy version or he has a version which um, uh, uh, might have some security issues. But primarily, I personally do like the in-app update because it is, for the developer, it is really simple to uh, implement. And uh, I've noted a couple of... Uh, key apps that I use that have offered that also. And uh, to me, it was a positive experience as a user to get the immediate update, at least the possibility to accept it at the moment. So that was, that's just as a background info on, and my personal opinion. But let's start. First, I had a... a, a note from one of the uh, the viewers that my font is too small in the uh, in the tutorial so let's first zoom a bit i hope this is better so that's a couple of notches okay first we have to um make sure we have the correct implementation so in in your cradle please add these uh, uh, implementations from the Google Play SDK and uh, I'll be running the version for the in-app updates 2.1.0 so these are the ones that we will need and uh, I'll link you up in the video into this uh, SDK page so you can come and see the official documentation and with the full examples in here this is not of course working version of the app and uh, I will tweak this a bit to uh, get it running on an actual game application so but in here you can read this through and uh, implement possibly even the, uh, the flexible version for your app okay now we have the SDK implementation in our cradle and uh, we need to create our class for the in-app updates so let's start from here package and in here we can create our class like so this will need context like so and uh, I just again prepare my application so that I can log what is happening inside by the way guys you can log however you want to my logging helping class is just a version which detects if I'm in a debug mode so I can limit when the app is logging and when it's not so it doesn't make sense to make full logs in production apps 
instead maybe just lock the errors okay so let's make sure we have our first class from the uh, in-app update SDK so this will be the manager that we use to call all the functions like so this has to be factory like so I will also add an additional variable because I want to ensure that the prompt only comes once for the user when he starts the app and uh, then for the rest of the session until the app is fully restarted it won't show again so it, it doesn't get annoying for the user I'm just gonna leave commented versions in here for the future because there's gonna be two versions for this uh, in-app update there's gonna be immediate version and there's then there's gonna be a flexible version we'll be implementing the immediate version because that is the most handy and reliable for the de developer and also for the user they don't need to think anything and as long as your application is a huge game in the size of let's say hundred, hundreds of megabytes or a gigabyte which needs a significant amount of time to download there is absolutely no sense to go for the flexible version just go with the immediate version and you'll be thanking yourself later and the user also it is going to be very simple choice for the user to deal with it immediately when the app starts it is time for the fu first function let me just notch it up a little bit again a bigger font a better for the viewers so i'm just gonna copy paste a comment from here this is going to be the app update type for immediate and uh, our first function is going to be called check immediate update like so we're going to need to pass in a activity result launcher and this is going to be intent sender request so we co we're going to code that activity result launcher into our main landing activity so this SDK in a SDK can inform our activity if it failed or if it was success and you can decide to do uh, a follow-up for toast or log it if you wish <clears throat> okay now let's get our app update info task i'll be copy pasting comments as we go so app, app update info task we'll be using our app update manager instance and we'll get the app update info then we need to check if there are updates available <clears throat> and if we can allow the update to run and we need to implement our uh, as on success listener so we'll be using the app update info task and add on success listener it's gonna be app update info return to us in here in the listener and now we want to make the conditions if the app update should be started so let's first check if it is available is available we'll be using the app update info 
update availability is update availability update available okay so i made a mistake in here this is not assignment just a comparison so if we have an update this is available will be true that's gonna the first condition to check if we can start the update then we need to check if it is allowed again we use the app update info and we're gonna say is app update allowed and we pass in the app update type and this is gonna be immediate so if we can proceed with the immediate update so now we have two boolean conditions and now we want to make our if statement and combine all of these and also if we have have not yet prompted the user to go with the update with our own variable here So pretty much we're saying that it is allowed, is available. It is allowed and we have not yet done this prompt for the user. So this is kind of a, we're ensuring that we, we don't push it too much for the user through our lifecycle methods when we are using calling this check immediate update later on in the main activity so <clears throat> then i'm just gonna log if we get through that hey we are starting the update and then we want to say that our update was requested is true now we obviously started this uh, a process for the user so this is going to make sure that it is not constantly popping up via to the user and then we want to make a function called start update so we will be co coding this function next so we it doesn't yet exist but we need to pass in app update info which we get from the listener and we need to pass in the activity result launcher which we will be passing in from our activity and also the app update type of immediate let's finish so. our add on success listener and then we can continue with our start update so i want to add in here else term just just to log what is happening inside here this is only debugging purposes for myself so i'm following through either way it is a success or we didn't start it this is kind of a developer method nothing else you can decide to do that or not to do it so let's add our function below here okay okay so now we have a permission to start the update let's see we'll be using again the app update manager and we'll be calling start update flow for result okay it's gonna need to have three parameters passed in so first we will pass in the app update info second 
we will again pass in the activity result launcher and third we will build our app update options app options and there's going to be new builder and we want to pass our app update type inside here and then we say set allow asset pack deletion google guides to give false value inside here and uh, to be honest, I'm not really sure what is the difference if we say true in here, but they were kind of a pretty straightforward saying, saying that you shouldn't be using set Allah asset pack deletion true unless you have a very special case. So we'll be following that guideline for now. And we can say build in here. Okay, now we have a mistake in our code app update info. We have nullable type, which it shouldn't be. Of course, it is not nullable type in here either. Correct. Okay. Again, I'm just copy pasting a couple of comments in here removing any problems for the same parameter value and now we are about ready to use these functions from our activity so let me see we we are missing one of the functions in here that we want to code next because this is a function check immediate function that will be calling only once during the life cycle of the app and it is in the on create but then we have to call another function check resume update at its on resume inside the main activity so let's code that next the third and the last function will be coding check resume update so this exists because if the user already accepted to go with the update now we have a background or foreground download process ongoing this will ensure actually that uh, the the functions the in-app function will be brought back up onto the view for the user so he can follow the process through until it is finished so let's code this one So I'm adding a comment first in here and then we are again saying that we want to have app update info task. We'll be using our app update manager and getting the app update info. Then we will code another on success listener. Info task add on success listener like so and again we have the app update info in here like so now we'll be checking if the update is in progress like so and if and only this is true then we will again start the update so this won't actually launch this won't launch another update process but instead it will the SDK will 
bring up the existing background task and so continue showing the started progress of downloading and installing until it is finished. So this is how Google is guiding the developers to uh, implement this as in-app update. So I'm following the guidelines in here. So okay, we are pretty much ready to implement this class into our main activity. Hmm, maybe in here after the uh, add on success listener, we would actually, I want to implement a couple more listeners at least for the debugging purposes. So if you check what we have in the SDK, we actually have cancelled listener. So at least I do want to debug, even though I'm not going to do any any code in here, at least I want to be able to debug. Then we also have add. There should be a on failure listener. Add on failure listener. Yes. And this will give you an exception. Like so. And these ones I'm just logging like so. Okay. I believe we have our check immediate update and we have check resume update and we actually have the start update which both of those functions will be using. So let's implement this into our landing main activity to get the in-app update initiated. Let's go and initiate our in-app update class inside our menu activity. So menu activity is, is my um, landing activity, the main activity of this game app. First, this is a coin module. I'm working with coin, so I want to uh, get this class through the coin because it's going to be using the application context and uh, coin takes care of it and uh, it won't get any memory leaks. So this will be called and we get the context through the app module of coin. So now in our main activity, I'm just going to call it my in -app update. Get my in -app update. So there's going to be two functions, lifecycle functions we need to use. It's going to be the first one is going to be in the on create. Okay, let's see. Now we need to call the check immediate update. Let's put it in here. This is going to be the first thing this app does when, when the first activity starts. We want to call check resume update. Sorry, check immediate update in here. We need to pass now the uh, re long result launcher. So it doesn't yet exist. So we have to code it at this point. So let's go up in up into our activity and code our activity result launcher. Do we have anything in here yet? No, we don't have. So this is going to be the first and only one. Register activity result. Now we have to pass in the contract. 
and start intent for result like so. And now we can do our when result So this is this is the activity result that the in-app update will call once it is done. Either way, it, it, it was success, it was cancelled, or the update failed. And if the app is open, at least you get to log, or you can start to decide to restart it if it failed, or do whatever, make a toast for the user, at least a log within the activity how it ended up like so and now let's monitor the results so the first one is is of course if it was okay if it's okay we don't need to do anything actually in here we will just log the result do i have a logger in here Yes, I do, with just a different name, okay? The next result might be cancelled. Okay, we will just log this again. There is no follow-up functions for this either. But then we have so-called result in app update failed. Now here is a follow-up code that we do want to initiate, initiate at this point. And this is going to be, we need to fetch this from a different place than activity. Result and in here we get result in app update failed. This is something that if you if you pay attention and you actually read the code samples in here, somewhere in here you get the uh, callback for the failed mentioned. I'll leave it up to you to go in, in here and check it out, but you don't. You have to fetch it from activity result result in app update failed. And uh, I, I did note in my own application that this is a good place to uh, reset the the variable of update was requested back to false so we can reinitiate it only and if this fail happens so i'll be adding a logging function in here i just want to log it all i'm doing in here as a follow-up code is I'm logging and uh, I'm also now at this point I'm toasting the user that hey because it failed update the app via Google Play please so that's kind of a result the user will see but in addition we had that custom variable in our in app update class in here we want to set this back to false because it did not work the user wanted to initiate it but it did not work so if you remember we are using this as a third condition to launch our update through check immediate update and it instantly if we get it uh, get the permission to go with the update we set it in true this will ensure that we don't constantly bring this back to the user if he already accepted it but if he accepted it and it still failed for any unforeseeable reason then we do set it back to false so we can resolve this start update as as soon as the uh, the on create gets called again so now let's go back to our on create in here and now we can 
fetch our in-app update request inside. So this is the, uh, the link into our activity and the uh, in-app update SDK callbacks. Okay, so it'll be using that one, both of these functions. So the next lifecycle will be on resume. We do not have that yet. So let's go down below here somewhere we should have at least on start. Okay. Beneath we will use the on resume lifecycle function. And in here we now want to do check resume update and we will pass in our in-app update request launcher in here. So should I add any comments? Let me see. Yes, I will copy paste this comment in here just to remind myself why I'm calling it to begin with. So resumes in-app updates if one was started already. That's all it does. Hmm, I guess we are ready to launch this app. We are calling immediate update, we are calling update and we have to start update. Okay, our app is working but the in-app update doesn't show up because we have to now release the test version a couple of times. So first open up your Google Play store, go into settings. Sorry, this is finished, but I'll try to explain. Go to about Play Store and then you have the Play Store version. You have to tag it as many times until it informs that the developer mode has been activated. Now in the uh, common setup, go into developer options and inside here you have to activate you have to activate the um, internal app sharing now this isn't necessary to release the test version through internal app method but this is the fastest way so you don't have to wait about the inspections of your app bundle which usually takes at least an hour or two and sometimes even days. And uh, the testing of this in-app update function is really hard. This is one of the hardest SDKs to test functionally. So this is the fastest way. Okay, now we have our Play Store set up and I'm just gonna run and start to get the new bundle. Build generate signed bundle. Okay, I'll just start it in here. So this will be running and we'll be using the app bundle in a moment. So next, go into your Google Play developer console. I have opened the Rainfire app. And uh, instead, I'm not gonna use the open beta testing, closed beta testing or internal beta testing. Go into settings, it is a little further down in here, and then you find the internal app sharing. So through here, you'll find this link to share the APK packages. Okay, let's open that in a new window. Again, sorry, this is finished, but you can find these from your own Google Developer Console. So now in here we can upload our app bundle APK. So let's see. We have it done. Okay. And now we will upload it. Now we have to repeat this twice because first we have to install this specific application to get the SDK into our phone. Then we will re-upload new version and then we can demonstrate how it works. Okay, let's see 
I'm just gonna give it, this is gonna be 25 like so, so I can identify it. So what I do now, I will install this specific version, I will re-upload another 26 version and let's demonstrate it. I shared the two app versions in, into my email so I can go and download them. So there's 25 and 26. Now we'll be installing this so we can use the SDK to acknowledge that hey we have a newer version which should be updated via the in-app updater. Okay, let's go in here. So if you have any other version, you need to delete it and you need to install your internally shared application via the shared link. Okay, let's do this. And uh, maybe this will work right out of the box because we already have the new version uploaded. Let's check. So let's give it a second. It is installing. Okay, let's open this one. So just our GDPR prompts. Hmm, we are not getting any in-app messages. So we need to go into our email and ensure that we acknowledge the existence of a newer version. Okay, so do this if your SDK doesn't work right out of the box. Then we will restart the app again. And here we go. Now the immediate in-app updater kicked in. So let's see what happened in the code. So right at the start of on create, we launched this prompt to update newer version. Now, because we are limiting how many times this can kick in during the life cycle of the app, if we close it and we get the on create recall to our custom variable, it doesn't reinitiate, which I think it is okay because I don't want to intrude that message too much for the user. But okay, now let's kill the app again and reopen it. Now we get it again because we just totally destroyed the app and we want to show it to the user again. So now why are we running the resume every time, check resume update every time in here. So this is why. If we now start, let me prepare this. I want to totally kill everything off and get the application into my uh, launcher like that. So let's launch this app now. It has started. I kill it off. Now we restart it. Now it come it the first thing do it to resume call. We will bring this uh, status bar status window of the ongoing updater back up. If you don't call this check resume update, I believe this will not get called back up on top of the the, the appli application itself. That's how the Google SDK. Uh, uh, guide, guided in, in the uh, document to use this. So I'm using it as guided. Okay, guys, everything seems to be working. We have the latest app, app, SD, app number 26. And now if we re try to restart this app like so, it is not intruding anymore. We have the latest application. So go check this out and be sure to implement that into your application. This is one of the most useful Google SDK so far, and uh, I like it. Okay, we'll be back.